Hey, what's up, OAS family? We're here with another book review today, and today we will be reviewing a book in the How to Paint series. Now, this series we featured before, and it's kind of an interesting series. The thing that's so unique about them is the size of the books. The books are small, so they can be held pretty easily in one hand. They're good for travel, uh, and also the variety of content. So they're kind of like a pocket traveling reference on whatever subject that they're about. So uh, we are going over number three in the series, um, and that one is called How to Paint Clouds, Water, Pine Trees, and Rock. So it's an elements reference that's related to the elements that you would use in traditional Chinese landscape painting. So the, before we get into the contents of the book, the dimensions are as follows. It is five and three quarter inches wide by eight and a quarter inches tall. And you can see it can be pretty held pretty easily in one hand. The amount of pages is, it's got about 111 pages, maybe, yeah, 111 pages and the text is all in Chinese. So before you just turn it off right away and say, oh, well, I can't use a book that where the text is all in Chinese, uh, just hang in there for a little while. You'll see that the most art books about Chinese paintings, it's really about the quality of the visuals. Even the ones that have English translations in them, it's pretty awkward to talk about. It takes a very skilled writer to write uh, descriptively about art and so when these books are translated into English, you know, the, the, the text is not always that useful. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it here. And you can see that the first section of the book is on clouds. So we're going to go and you can see here this technique here on the left, which is more shading oriented, maybe more abstract. And then the one on the right, which focuses more on line work. You can see here on the left, we're blending the two. And then more techniques here on the right. You can see here on the left and the right, you can see how uh, it's showing clouds in the context of compositions. Change the orientation here. Let's see that. There's a very loose abstract rendering right there with some lines and some heavy ink work. Changing orientations again. We get two pieces that are showing a different balance between line work and shading work. One has more dominant line work and the other one has more dominant shading work. This is a very simple composition where you're seeing both kind of mist and clouds. So clouds that are above the mountains and then clouds that are sort of surrounding the mountains. Another piece with a very striking mountain in the foreground and clouds in the distance. And again here we see this, which is the more sort of shading style, not really as dependent on line work. A couple more compositions here, very line dominant style there, and then very shaded style here. All right, and then we get to this next section, which is on water. You can see here this uh, style that's really been popularized more by Japanese painters, but you can see how it was sort of originated in China where we have this kind of um, line 
drawing to represent the water. For this, we have different lines showing how they can be used to represent water in different ways. And then showing the ripples here. And the same kind of technique with a more complex composition where you're seeing both calmer water with the white space and the more ripples represented with the line work. Here in this looser style. There was some much sort of more detailed line work with some shading in and amongst the line work, and then here without any line work, where you sort of see this sort of rendering of the water in the foreground, and then some grass, and then this calmer water area, and then these banks in the background. It's really nice, peaceful feeling. Here's the idea of a bridge with the water flowing underneath. A river that's splitting in two. This waterfall here. And then over here. This is a very nice sort of waterfall that you would see in like a stream. More line work, we're starting to see now like waves rendering. We see more of the activity of the water. And this is interesting here where we have sort of like kind of rough water that creates this patch of like calm and then these little whirlpools in there. And then over here we have sort of waves and how they're crashing against the rocks. We have a boat in this composition. One more showing boat navigating some sort of less calm waters and then this very kind of signature we see these a lot this this rendering style of water a lot in japanese style paintings as you can see here with that sort of varied water showing the shading and then the light to show the the rougher water and then we're going to get into the pine tree section you can see right there they draw the trunk and the branches and apply the leaves and then more close-up work on the line work for the trunks here we see the root section and then how they take groupings of leaves this leaf composition is Kind of a unique thing you just when you see the paintings you just think oh i'm just going to paint a bunch of leaves but there are intentionally created in these groupings to give the composition a pleasing effect and to give it balance here's sort of complete trees one done in a more sort of detailed style on this right hand side and a little bit looser on the left hand side showing trees in the distance here on the left hand side and once again, some darker line work, bolder on the right. More leaf groupings showing different styles for rendering. You can see here they're splitting the brush to create more texture. 
and then they got finer lines, larger lines, sort of um, dots with lines sort of emanating from them, different styles. Each one's kind of unique over here. So you can see this book is very much a reference book. Like really great if you're gonna go somewhere and you don't, you know, have a lot of, you know, you don't want anything too cumbersome, but you want, you know, something that, that you can just paint through or look at or get ideas and inspiration. Here we have hanging vines on a tree. That's really kind of a cool effect and look. Couple more like younger trees here. And then how to render them more far away in groups. So for a small book, it has quite a lot of content. We're getting some feathery textures here on this left-hand side, that's really nice. And then again, shown here in a slightly different composition. A different style of pine. These are more like that, got that fir, Douglas fir, kind of Christmas tree type look. And then a different style here on the right hand side. And then we get into the section on rocks. So this one, it builds an element in kind of a sequential grouping. It's like one, two, three, four. You can see that it goes from simpler to more complex. It shows you how to build it. And again, here as well. Here's a more complex finished rock composition. See how much variety there are. They're sort of paintings un unto themselves. And they could be, of course, featured elements in larger compositions, but it's really nice to be able to practice them in case you ever want to make a rock feature the star of your painting. So it shows it sort of divorced from a larger composition, so you can really focus on the detail of it. Some lighter ink work on the left-hand side here. Some mixture of rocks with grassy elements. Love how it sort of like makes the holes in the rocks. So you can see here, we've got this kind of slaty type textures on this rock on the left hand side. This one mixed with a branch element on the right hand side. And these two are very striking looking. Handsome rocks. Really great how they play with the shadows here to create this depth and texture. Really nice. So you can see for these small, reasonably priced books, there's kind of a lot of content, a lot of ideas. They're really great for just getting your creative juices flowing and giving you a lot of things to try in a single book. These are like these pointy, narrow, sort of stalactite stalagmite type rocks. Then here are rocks with water. Then we're getting into the sort of compositions, pine tree composition. And we see here final compositions in color. I actually think it's this is the right way.
really amazing how when you spend so much time focusing on black and white and then you get to these finished color compositions, how much they pop out. Get those mineral greens being showed off in these two paintings. So that's it. That's how to paint clouds, rocks, or clouds, water, pine trees, and rock. And it's book three in the How to Paint series. You can get it on our website. Thank you for watching this book review. And I hope you got a lot out of it. And we wish you happy painting.